What is up everyone? I'm Scratch. Welcome to the channel. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today, guys, we've got Ash on the channel and we are going to continue our uh, little game that we had on Doc's channel. So if you guys did not have a chance to check that video out with me, Ash, Cruzan and Big Papa Drock talking about uh, a live arena tier list, but in a very interesting format. So today we've got Ash on the channel. What's up, Ash? How are you doing, bro? Scratch, what's up, bro? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. I am really freaking into <laughs> especially pvp right now but the game in general you know how it is like our interest always ebbs and flows in raid right like any yep. other game but i am i am in right now I don't know, i've got the i've got the itch what about you yeah it's the same bro I like I, the itch, so why don't you scratch it i'm waking up i'm waking up every morning doing some live arena fights you know <laughs> trying to get a 10 win streak is a bit more painful than uh, expected because uh when you're I, that I, high yeah. I usually get stopped like, uh, I don't know, like eight wins, nine wins, seven wins. And I'm like, oh, again and again and again, you know, and I, it's getting so frustrating. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, <laughs> but yes, yeah, it's still... man. it's like, and you're <laughs> what, like 150 in live arena right now or so? Or uh, yeah, around there, around yeah. there pretty much. So yeah, that's tough. That's a tough feat, man. It is, it is, uh, but I'll get there, uh, I'll get there uh, one day. Yes. Hopefully I'm not going to get stopped by all of the, the Krakens all the time. But either way, guys, today we are going to talk about the best champions in Raid Shadow Legends. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to do it in a slight, uh, slightly different format. Basically, Ash is going to name a champion. He's mm -hmm. going to say this champion is got here because of etc, etc. And then I'll say if I agree with it, and I'm going to give you my take on that champion. And then rinse and repeat. We're just going to swap on, uh, uh, in and out. In terms of what champions, we can talk about any rarity, to be honest. Uh, basically, what we think are some of the best champions in Raid. Now, we're not going to try to make top 10, uh, uh, top 10 champions and rank them and uh, all this stuff, like who's number 1, 2, 3, and 4, etc. But it's just kind of like to give you guys a general uh, idea. A little so fun take on the mm. old, the same old shtick that we always do, right? It's like a fun new take on it. Pretty much, like pretty it. much, yeah. So I'm going to let you start, Ash. Ah, thanks, man. Well, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna throw it back at you for one question. Do you want okay. me to go like meta or off meta? I mean, up to you. Just surprise me. What's uh? All right, bro. Or or let's just think in the following way. If you would start a new account and you would have the possibility to pick a few champions for that account, five champions, right? Uh, yeah. Considering that they're the best champions in the game, what would you what would you go for? Well, I mean, if I was gonna just pick five, I'd go all mythical, bro. This is a rarity, <laughs> but. I'll switch it up. I'll switch it up. I'm going to go with, I'm going to start with a mythical and then I'll go okay. down because I have some epics in mind too. But I want to start with a mythical that, like, gosh, I mean, I, uh, listen, I hate fighting Committus, obviously, like, he, and I don't have him and I wish I did because he's so annoying, so disruptive. But my most wanted mythical is nice. Nice. <laughs> nice yeah. The he's the Shadow Thief. This dude is, he's probably like, I think we always overvalue a little bit what we don't have, right? So, like, uh, maybe I would go, I'm not sure if he'd be number one in the entire game, but God, this guy is absolutely insane. Oh my God, I don't know what else to say about him, but like, he's to me, he's one of the most top tier in the arena and outside of the arena, especially in the arena. He's so, so, so annoying. He has block revive, he has tons of damage, he has the provoke, the stuns, he has the stupid change forms, he has the uh, the unkillable, the revive random ally every time uh, he kills an enemy. I don't know, man, like the unkill or the block damage protected with the counter attack. This guy's just next level annoying to go against, and I want him on my team, bro. I know, bro. Like I freaking hate when I face him, and uh, he's left left alone, and he's just slowly taking my team down. It's just right? this crazy passive that makes him po more powerful when he has that allies, you know. And I don't know what's what's about him, but uh, he is Oof. definitely very very powerful for uh, for life arena. So I do agree with him. Yes, he is one hundred percent one of the most. Uh, OP champions for uh, for arena, not just live arena, but even classic arena. Like uh, he is uh, at the top of the meta in a defense team sport, pretty much all of the all of the top teams uh, nowadays because he's just so tanky. Uh, yeah, deals so much damage, and as you mentioned, that freaking annoying counter attack and block damage that cannot be removed, dropping in at the at the wrong moment all the time is just yeah. so nasty. It, like I don't want to make this too arena focused because again, like, he can be a great DPS anywhere, but like. In the arena, like I, I feel like 
he's not like an easy ban because like you're just banning a DPS. You like you oftentimes you'd rather ban obviously a committed or something like that, but maybe even a uh, uh, control champion or something like or an Armands or yeah. you know. So I end up facing him quite a lot. I feel like because of that, you know, and I never feel good about it at the end. And when I kill him, it's almost like one of those things like, wow, I actually killed this dude because <laughs> you feel so tough to kill, you know. He he is indeed very tough to kill. Yeah, like there are only a few champions that can easily take him. Uh... Yeah, uh, take him down. The rest of them, they usually suffer. You know, like I had Taras not being able to kill him when he was left alone. I was like, oh my Dude, god. I mean, my Taras like, is not stupid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't have a plus four Taras, but still his build is pretty good and he was just not able to take him down. I was like, oh no, and I just lost the fight. I was like, Dude, you can have like a Harima and be like, I won this easy because you have the obviously the force of the best force affinity like defender <laughs> and you'll still lose to nice sometimes. You're like, what yeah. the heck? This guy. He doesn't anyway, wicked. I digress. You know? <laughs> he doesn't wicked. So I'm, I'm gonna... Who I'm you gonna got? I'm going to yeah. go with a mythical as well. Um, okay. And I feel like it's just a jack of all trades, in my opinion. And that's Lazarus. Okay. I was going to guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel I like I'm using him in a, in a lot of different areas. So if if I would have the uh, opportunity to pick him on a brand new account, like I know a lot of people might think of him just like an arena champion, but he's just yeah. so much more than that. You know, like the A1 giving him the shield, you have the block buffs, you have the immunity on your team, remove buffs from the enemies, you have the increased attack, the strength and the thermiter, uh, boost the thermiter, decrease the thermiter, he the revives revive, with the passive, the increase revive. accuracy, the veil, the speed aura, and then the second form, which deals crazy good damage, he brings his own increased attack, and uh, he reset. can basically lock the enemy skills, Lockout, you know, which yeah. is very, very nasty. So I, I, I feel like he's amazing in Hydra, amazing for Arena as a damage dealer, or as a a Termiter booster as a support champion, you know, like he, he can fit so many different roles and he's just such an amazing champion. I'm glad that you mentioned him because even despite us leading off with two mythicals, man, I think that, uh, I think this guy's a little bit misunderstood and I think you do it, did a great job articulating why he's so good because I feel like whenever I do mention him on my channel, I get some comments saying that like, yeah, but like, you know, he was really underwhelming damage wise in Hydra. Like he's okay in the arena. That's about it. Like, but it's the fact that he's like, there's no one to compare him to. I was trying to find a comparison, like yep, a that is jack of all. But like the fact that you could run him in Hydra to be your block buffs champion, to add a little bit of damage, to be your increased attack champion, be your strength and champion for survivability, and be your reviver. You know, because it's so hard to find all of those, and you can't find him in one champion. He's got it. You know, uh, it's like. He, any and, and that maps on to anywhere in the game to your point right like you can use him it like in any any area of the game you can use him in any fashion that you want to because he does so much in one kit so i completely agree yeah 100 like i'm not even using him as a damage dealer for hydra right uh he, yeah i am running him because he enables my team to be full auto uh if somebody dies he's gonna revive them and uh, I run him usually on nine piece protection set. Yeah, I do have full crit rate on that build, but I don't have like a crazy damage build because his damage does suck in Hydra. Like he's not going to deal crazy yeah. damage, but people need to understand that you're not using him in for damage. You're using him for support, basically, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's a reviver who can place block debuffs similar to like a mighty Uko can, mm. but he brings a strength in the increased attack and everything else that we talked about, right? Like yep. he just brings more to the table. And uh, yeah, to your point, man, he can set up, he can set up a bomb champion. You can do anything with this dude, you know? Yep. I, I agree. All right. All right. Next, I'll go next? all the way from mythical all the way to epic. Okay. I'm going to go way old school, bro. I just released a video or maybe I'm going to tomorrow. I don't know when this is going to go live, but I was talking about it's almost Halloween time. Are you a Halloween fan scratch or no? Yeah, I am. You can say so. You I'm do. not like, we're not really celebrating it back home as much, but usually you just go clubbing uh, costumes oh, you and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, so I'm not like, I'm, I'm not a go all out for Halloween, but now that I have, and you'll be here, oh, you probably already are here with, with a kid. Yeah. But like, yeah, I've gotten a little bit back into it, but I like the darkest. I like, I like the Halloween aesthetic, even though I'm not mm. like, my house isn't decked out. Anyway, I digress. But uh, back in 2019, Halloween Epic. That wasn't named Madam Saris. Who is it? Do you know? Miscreated monster. I'm on the Miscreated screen. Miscreated monster, man. I was just thinking back about like old school epics who really still have it. And Miscreated Monster, he really does, man. Like his kit is very good, especially considering he's five years old in this game almost. Yeah. He's got the 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 good chance of stun on the A1. 
because the double hitter in each shot has the uh, you know the thirty percent chance mm. of landing it or twenty five. He's got that great shield on the AOE based on 25% of the damage inflicted. So the more enemies alive, the more damage is put out, which can be one of the best shields in the game, you know, yep. uh, would build correctly. And the more control with another stun on the A2, three turn cooldown, then the ally protect with the 50% heal on himself with the continuous heal, not for one, not for two, but for three turns on himself. So great survivability and great. His base HP 23K. And then he's got the fear on the attacker. It's not a 20%, 30%, or 40% chance of landing that fear on the attacker for one turn. It's 100% a fear on the attacker every time they attack somebody under ally protection. Mm. So you put that all, and the ally protection, by the way, is three turn duration. So you can really get a lot of fears. So listen, is Miscreated Monster, you know, an end game extraordinaire? No. But boy, when we talk about progression in this game, uh, I feel like he's one of the best epics out there and still has it this far with the control, the survivability, the support. He brings a lot to the table. So I think Miscreated Monster still got it for an old school champion. What about you? You like Miscreated Monster? Yeah, I do think he still he still has it, to be honest, because uh, yes, he's not the most OP in the endgame because the endgame evolved so much uh, for the last five yeah. years. Uh, he's not the best champion to basically uh, take on bosses, right? He's a good champion to support your team on waves, right? So when you're progressing and you don't have that one-shot seer or all those crazy funky things that uh, other people might use, uh, then he actually comes in play. And Spider used to be one of the hardest thing, uh, the hardest challenge in this game, if you remember it before, right? Oh, so when, when he they came around back oh, in He the completely day, changed it, it like... because only Santa... Uh, only Sir Nicholas was able to basically do what he's doing with the shield and stuff. So he completely changed the game. And I, I do think uh, he he actually aged pretty well considering uh, what sort of power we've got in the game, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And like even against bosses, like, so the reason I kind of got to think about Miscreated Monster here a billion years later <laughs> is I used him in some random double boss and Soul Cross and mm. Centranos. And I was just like, even against a boss, I think it was a double ice golem or something else, you know, like just having that huge ass shield, especially considering with two bosses, there was a lot and minions, there was a lot of enemies yeah. out there. Like it, it, it was the difference maker for me, you know? So like even beyond wave content, albeit niche to your point, like I'm not sitting here saying that miscreated monster is freaking nice, <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah. literally, but I think that like, man, He's a rare example of a champion that has not been like super crept over the years, meaning that like when you stand him against other epic control support kits, I feel like he still got it, you know? Yeah, he's definitely pretty uh, pretty solid for uh, an epic that's five years old, to be honest with uh, yeah. you. Yeah. Who you got next? Do you Ooh, have any that's, epics? Uh, any that's rares? a good question. I'm actually, <laughs> I, I am planning to go for uh, for an epic champion as well, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go for one that's, I know he's, Kind of like not the most popular op option Ooh. out there, but I will okay. go for uh, uh, Alika as an epic champion. It's just I can't stay away from her. It's just, Bro, just so freaking good. Not though. the most popular man. If you had asked me one guess of what e which epic stretch is gonna pick, it was Alika. It right? would have been Alika, bro. Your your name is synonymous with Alika. But go on. But she's I, not just that I so good, man. Say. Like the damage yeah, yeah. that she brings for an epic champion is like literally outshines some of the mythical champions that we have in the game. You know and the extra hit on the A1, which can bring uh, pretty good damage too. But the A2 is just one of the most powerful skills uh, in the game, especially for Apex Legendaries, right? On a two-turn cooldown, like you're going to just one-shot, one-shot, one-shot. I know it's not the most important thing uh, while you're just progressing through the game and stuff to be able to kind of like one-tap everybody, but she's going to be solid for the Curse City. She's going to be solid for Faction Wars. She's going to be solid for the Doom Tower. She's going to be solid even for the Hydra Clan boss as a damage dealer, if by any chance we don't have any other uh, free legendaries that we're constantly getting with uh, a seven-day login, right? Uh, just in general, she's such a powerhouse. And then if you don't have a lockout champion, she can increase the cooldown of the enemy skills by two turns with, uh, uh, with the A3 on a three-turn cooldown, you know? So I feel like she just brings a lot of things to the table and the damage is just so freaking good that it's hard to stay away from her. <laughs> yeah. Great damage, great control. I uh, I agree, man. I agree. Mm. Uh, what you've got? I'm going to go... I guess I'm just going to go with like super chalk here because it is supposed to be the best champions. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with 
who I think might be the best overall, meaning equally as good in PvP and PvE in the game, and that is the obvious, perhaps, Marichka the Unbreakable. Mm. Uh, I think that Marichka is... It's hard to say the best of anything, the best support in the game because there's so many good support champions. But frankly, if I had to choose one, I would go with Marichka. I she's so insanely good in the arena right now with bombs being a thing, not just Kamitas, but also Nishak and and, yep. and uh, Astrolith. Uh, so and uh, Gizmak with the HP burn, right? So there's a lot of utility just off the passive. Uh, but forget the arena, forget anywhere specifically. One of the best heals in the game, 40% of her HP, the protected strength in the shield, the chance of an extra turn. I run her in stone skin in relentless. It's hard, obviously, to, to do, but it can be insane. Obviously, the stone skin is great for the arena. Relentless is great anywhere, but even getting that extra turn uh, is it's just everything she does is so valuable. That cleanse, the turn meter boost. I mean, we all know Marichka, right? And the revive, right? And the speed in all battles. I just think that she's still so incredibly versatile and strong. And wherever you are, she's got something that you're definitely going to benefit from. She's always going to add extreme value to your team, basically anywhere that you use her. Yeah, I definitely agree, bro. Like when they uh, brought in uh, King, uh, King Narciss and Queen Ancora, right? Marichka and Taras, yes. they saw a bit of a decline in, uh, in a the meta. A little bit, yeah. But yeah. only for a few weeks, you know, let's just say for a month and a bit. But now with all of the mythicals, uh, she became even more powerful than she's ever been before because of the passive. Like pair her with Nice, pair her with Sigfrund, you know. You, you, you've got some crazy passives just proccing in there, reviving and being annoying. Uh, so she's very, very powerful. And as you mentioned, one of the craziest, uh, craziest heals as well with the shield as well. Uh, very, very nice uh, overall as a as a champion you know um i am using her a lot to be honest with you yeah same mm. same what do you what what legendaries off the top of your head would you take above her would you go like siffy or like uh, who else would who else would be in the conversation for i you? think i think siffy might be in the conversation but again it really if we're talking about yeah. arena or especially live arena it will really depend uh what opponent picks uh but i do tend to pick marichka first yeah okay Same. I, I do that i do that a lot uh recently because uh if i leave marichka for them it's gonna become more uh, more of a problem if they have comedas if they have uh other champions that uh, i really need to take out of there you know like nice especially with sick friend uh all three together they would be just pure cancer so <laughs> and indeed it, yeah it would Galatine, definitely be yeah, yeah. Would be so crazy. okay who you got next man so i'm gonna go in for uh for a legendary as well, and uh, I'm gonna go for uh, King Narciss, just just the opposite of him. Uh, I do like the champion a lot. Uh, I feel like he's just so freaking powerful, especially with that revive, uh, with block revive. Sorry, on uh, on the A3, you know, yeah, uh, the extra yeah. turn if Ancora is on the same team, of course. The A2 just completely. Uh, Crapping on all of the passives is what makes him just nuts, you know? And because we were talking about Marichka, the shield that she brings, and uh, a lot of other oh, champions yeah. that bring uh, bring shield or something like this or strengthen, you know? Uh, he's just going to absolutely delete those champions regardless of, uh, of who they are. So I feel like he has so much power, so much control on the battlefield that if by any chance I don't get to pick this champion and the opponent does, I'm going to regret it. Like 90% I'm going to regret it because either they're going to uh, ban one of my nukers and they're just going to block the revive on the other one uh, if they have enough firepower, you know, uh, if by any chance I cannot bring a lockout or something like that. Either even if, even if I take in a lockout, that freaking Ancora will just A1 and just all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. put him back where he was before, you know, and uh, he's just so freaking nasty. He doesn't have the best survivability, but I feel like he's just so powerful uh, overall as a champion that... Uh, I just cannot ignore him as a as a damage dealer, and I I would one hundred percent go with one because he can be good for uh for uh waves and stuff. He's not gonna be the best in the Hydra Clan boss, but hey, Hydra Clan boss, it won't be as important early on anyway, you know. No, I I hundred percent agree. Mm. I cannot argue. He's a he's a beast. He's a beast overall of a DPS, and I actually, yeah, like in arena, sometimes I'll ban. I'll ban him just because I don't want to deal with that, you know, mm. even though I, I sell them ban damage dealers. But if Narciss, I'll make the exception sometimes. Yeah, it, it, you have to, depending on what the, what they bring to the table. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. What do you have next? All right. Uh, I guess I'll go with – I'm going to go with my personal favorite rare just so I can give every rarity here because I've got okay. a difficult legendary okay. epic. Uh, I think 
Tree Shield Knot is the best. Well, I think he's. The, I don't think I th- I, he's the best rare reviver in the game. Yeah, I like. With all apologies, yeah. Relic Tender is great because she has that cleanse and the continuous heal, so it's hard to compare. But Tree Shield just so freaking good, man. Like, obviously, great for faction wars for most players. Great for rare only content, so you can definitely be used in the end game. The only rare in the game to have two revives, uh, not one ally, but two. Uh, he's got the increased defense on all allies. He's got the heal on the same ability on all allies. Three turn cooldown, weak version, but he's a rare. That's going to be the case. Uh, I just think, and the triple hitter on the A1, right? Like great for Fire Knight, great for progression anywhere. Man, this dude is just like a, if you're lacking a really solid reviver uh, or just support in more niche areas, I think that he's head and shoulders above any other rare option for reviving and support. Yeah, I think he's actually really, really uh, powerful, to be honest. Um, I was actually very happy when they introduced him with a fusion. Uh, I can't remember what fusion yeah. we had. but Yes, he was. I forgot what it was, too, but you're right. Very, very good uh, uh, rare support champion, 100%. You know? And as you mentioned, probably one of the best, uh, one of the best out of all of them. Not, uh, not many can revive, give you the increased defense, give you the healing, has a, a speed aura for uh, for the faction creeps, the decreased attack as well with the multi-heater, you know, and uh, he's definitely a very, uh, very powerful champion, especially for faction wars on the, on the silver Yeah, watches. we need, like, we need, we, I'm not asking for 150 amazing rares, you know, but, like, we need a good rare or two here every so often, right? So mm. that's a, it's a good thing to see, you know? <laughs> now, because we are on this faction, because we are on this yeah. faction, I'm actually going to go in with uh, Incensa. Uh, I feel like she's just such an amazing champion. Uh, you know who I'm talking about, right? Yin Chen's yes, a great yes, battle. Yes, yeah. yes. Because uh, I, I know I butchered her name. That's why, that's why I'm asking, you know? <laughs> it took me a second, but I'm like, I know. Uh, what? <laughs> I got you. Well, I butcher every name too, so I won't even try. <laughs> I won't even try. I feel like she's just so... Uh, so amazing. Like 100% got here as a, as a champion. And not a lot of people have her yet. You know, yeah. because she's more of a newish champion. But my God, she brings so many things to the table. Like you have the decreased defense, the weaken uh, on the on the A3, and that goes through immunity, so you don't really care about it, which makes it good for uh, for it's PvP cool. as yeah. well. I haven't really played her much yeah. in PvP yet, but Me I'm neither. definitely interested in uh, changing her build a bit for PvP and uh, uh, give her a go. And the A2 is what makes it really, really good with that poison cloud, the increased speed, the continuous heal, the termiter. Basically, this will make your champion almost immune to the damage and stuff like this because they're just going to be weak hits, right? And uh, so effective. And the A1 AoE with, with decreased attack and the ally attack. The ally uh, joining in is so huge too. For, yeah. uh, for Hydra Clambos especially, it's just nuts, you know? And the passive is pretty good too. You have an accuracy aura for all battles. And she's one of my most favorite designs in the game. I don't know. I really I really like the design. Of oh, her. cool. Mm. She's, she I, looks really cool, yeah. Yeah, I think she's she never struck me as like wow, she's my favorite. But you're right, it's like from the antlers to the old the whole aesthetic, she is pretty cool looking. Mm, pretty solid. What I do agree. you think about her? I agree. Mm. I love her, man. I love her. I use her on my main, like my number one nightmare Hydra clan boss team, and I pair her with. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It could be whoever your best DPS is, basically, right? Yeah, but pretty much. I have her with Tashiro mm. and Makage, oh. so like he's getting all those extra. Hard hitting A ones, right? With yeah. the with the two being Shadowkin, and with the Yincheska's A one. So I just absolutely love the combo, and I I love the champion for all the reasons that you said. To me, I don't. To be real though, I don't use her anywhere outside of Hydra. Not to say that she's not good. Just I have not implemented her or explored. You know where she could improve my team the most. Mm. Uh, but other than that, like all all around, there's only what like. I don't know, five champions with a decreased defense a weekend on the on the same uh, uh, I think ability. So, yeah. they're, they're not that many. On yeah. <clears throat> Around there, like yeah. Bellinor, Lydia, Venus, Incesca. Uh and I feel like on a three turn. I don't know. That's about it. I feel like we're missing one. Maybe not though. <laughs> I mean we have an epic that puts the smaller version of weekend right spider. Uh, and we have uh, Rock Sam, which does nothing basically, right? So we can't really don't, don't put Rock Sam in a combo. You, you can't really put him in a conversation, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, that's a very unique skill set, even if we're missing one. Uh, mm. But yeah, I, I totally agree. What's your last uh, champion, Ash? Bring it on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sounds sounds good. Sounds good. Let's go with. Uh, let's go with. Let's stay in the same damn faction, man. Let's okay. do it. Let's see. Uh, let's go, Grand Oak Padrick, man. Nice. I love, I love me some Grand <clears throat> Oak. This guy's a beast. Maybe I'd go Feral if I had him. I'm so jealous of you if you do. But 
Grand Oak, man. I love this guy. He should have been a Christmas champion, man. He should have been a Christmas fusion or something. It looks yeah. like a, a curmudgeon old St. Nick or something going on. I don't know. Yeah, he, I think I, he was uh, for uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day, I think. He oh, was, was he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. But not a fusion, unfortunately. Maybe Maybe Feral should have been, because he looks like a Christmas tree straight up, right? Yeah, he was uh, he was added during Christmas, but not as a fusion. They gave us some other stuff. <laughs> oh, was he, man? That's great. Yeah. Who was last year's Christmas champion? That was Feral uh, or whatever? Like, who was the fusion? He was not the fusion, unfortunately, but he was added in the same batch. with the. F I can't remember the fusion from last year, to be honest. Because there, there were uh, fusions of the past at Christmas. There was uh, Sir Nick way back in the day. There was Nishak. There was... Uh, hmm. Who did we have? Uh, Pixneal. Yeah, that was back Pixneal, in Pixneal, Nishak, back... and Sir Nick are the only three that I can recall, but I know we're missing two, I guess. Anyway. Yeah, I, I, guess I can't I remember, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I love this dude, man. He's got the cooldown of random ally skills by two turns on his <clears throat> A1. A lot of people overlook that. Yeah, that's a uh, nice one. It's really nice to have, man. I mean, it's weird because it's not, it's RNG, so you can't like depend on it. But obviously, this can proc every single time that he joins in an ally attack as well. Yeah. Uh, which is he's teaming up with the with the allies, obviously, every time he uses A2. So you've got, like, these consistent shots at decreasing cooldown uh, by two turns, which is re just really nice to have. Uh, his A2, obviously, he has the ally attack, and then he has the restore HP and the healing, right? So, like, you can argue, okay, if I want to ally attack, I'd rather have Makage or whomever. But the cool thing is he serves a very... Uh, a uh, clear and obvious and unique role as an ally attacker in being like a really good buffer, cleanser, healer, support. And then you add the passive onto that and you're like looking at an absolutely insane champion. Turn meter boost, cleanse, increase speed with the ally attack and the healing, right? And every buff for exactly who needs it, right? <laughs> On his passive. Yeah. I don't know what else there is to say. This guy is like just next level in terms of the utility going back to where this whole thing started when we we're talking about Lazarus, right? Yeah. Is that <clears throat> he just brings so much in one champion that it's it, he almost feels mythical, you know? Yeah, he's definitely one of the one of the better legendaries that we have in the game. I used him for a for a very long time in the Hydra Clan boss. Uh, I managed to get a second copy of him. I built both Ooh, of them to use him in the Hydra Clan boss. Uh, at the moment, I'm not. Uh, using him in the Hydra Clan boss, but he's very good for the Fire Knight. Very, just very good in general for pretty much everything. Even yeah, in, in Live Arena, yeah. there are a lot of people using him in Live Arena super fast, you know. And he can be very annoying with the buffs and uh, uh, with the ally attack because not many champions can take a turn, give you increased attack, increased defense, or whatever else you might need, and yeah. team up all of your team to uh, to attack uh, an enemy. So he's definitely, definitely a, uh, a very yeah, solid. Like I mean, like you said, you can use him absolutely anywhere. Fire Knight, ally attack is good against almost every boss in the game. So I don't want to restrict him to Hydra, but especially Hydra to get your increased attack, increased accuracy, increased defense, uh, to get all of that, plus the, be the increased speed champion, plus be the cleanser on your team. Plus, like, he just brings so much. I, I love that dude, you know? Yeah, he's definitely really, uh, really nice. So I'm going to go Who's with your last. Yeah. I'm going to go with one that was just recently added to the game, and uh, he's my most wanted legendary champion in the game at the moment, and that is uh, Onryo Eyasu from the Shadow King faction, right? Ooh, okay. My okay. God, I'm not sure if you had a chance I've to... seen him. You've seen he... him, yeah? Yeah. My I mean, God, bro. I don't have him, but yeah, I've seen him. My God, that, that's all I'm saying. Like, he's just such a powerful champion, and if, if we are talking about damage in the Hydra clan boss, once Thranda is going to get decapitated, uh, once and for all, or whatever they're gonna do to the Hydra Clan boss, uh, it's gonna be Toshiro and it's gonna be this guy. You know, they're gonna be the top dogs. Um, not only for that, but he's very good for arena, just very good for waves as well because of the passive. Like he's one of the craziest champions that uh, they've added in a uh, in quite a while. You know, you have the block revive, yeah. uh, ignore stone skin, uh, strength and shield. Like he can do so many freaking things. The uh, attack aura for arena, but that passive is. Is just such a such a genius thing the way they actually designed it. You know, ignores one hundred percent of the target's defense and just bang deals a lot of damage. Very very amazing. He champion. looks. What do you think of this dude's aesthetic? I think it looks super cool. Yeah, he's definitely pretty like badass. The, the I like knife the knife in his mouth, man. It I like, like the design a lot. Yeah, and the bow. The... He's. Yeah, yeah, and his sword like looks super cool. The 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 blue like. I, I love I love when stuff. they're doing this on uh, yeah. on the on the designs. You know, they're putting these uh, lights on them. Look. 
Yeah. Really good, yeah. Yeah. That's a really good call out, man. Honestly, like, dude, it makes me, you know what that makes me think of? It makes mm. me think of like, why the heck won't they buff a Leal again? You know, I know like yeah. another ignore stone skin should be amazing. You know, void legendary, you know, give him a little buff, give him a cool passive like that. You know, uh, anyway, I digress. That's what he needs. Yeah. And the yeah. eyelid would be, uh, would be great. Yeah. Anyway, but he's awesome. not on the list today. <laughs> uh, that That's about it pretty much. Guys, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. What are the best champions that you guys have on your accounts, right? As we, I mentioned at the very beginning, we're not just going to rank top 10 champions. Like, let's just pick all the mythicals and job done, you know, because uh, we wanted to make it a bit more uh, uh, more different diverse. than usual. Yeah, more <laughs> yeah. diverse, yeah. exactly. And uh, I feel like we picked some pretty interesting champions this time around to kind of like uh, give you guys our take on it ash was a pleasure to have you on the channel and guys make sure you head over to ash's channel we actually have a different video dropping uh dropping in there uh as well so stay tuned for it as well but a pleasure to have you on the channel ash thanks for having me bro appreciate it it's fun and as usual appreciate all of you guys watching much love and i'll catch you all in the next one peace